What's up, everyone? My name is Edson Cardona, and I want to welcome you guys to the Hashtag Let's Kick the Series. On these episodes, we get the pleasure to be joined by professional athletes, get a little insight on their background and how they made it this far in their athletic careers. A conversation between athletes about their journeys, leading them to success. I hope you guys enjoy. What's up, everyone? Hope you're all keeping safe with the COVID-19 pandemic. And my hope is that we're all doing our part in standing in solidarity with the racial justice movement and against police brutality because Black Lives Matter. My name is Edson Cardona. I want to welcome you guys to another episode of the Hashtag Let's Kick It series. For all those who joined before, thank you for coming back. For those who are joining for the first time, welcome. On this episode, I have the honor to introduce Israel Cisse. <laughs> Originally from Sierra Leone, played for multiple teams growing up. Youngest player to play for the LA Galaxy. Former US U17 and U20 national team player. Also played in the USL for the Orange County Blues, Maryland Monarch, and Cleveland City Stars. Also now and currently playing for in the MASL Ontario Fury. There you go, how you doing brother? I'm doing good, Edson. What's going on? Good, man. Coronavirus shooting you, man. Oh, man. I'm all right. <laughs> I'm good, man. I'm trying to stay healthy, you know? I want to thank you for uh, joining us, joining me on the hashtag. Let's kick it serious, man. It's a pleasure to have you. No, thank you, man. Thanks for having me, man. I appreciate it. No problem. We'll get started. So when did your journey begin as, a, as an athlete, as a soccer player, as a footballer, as many say? <laughs> Man, I'm a, I'm gonna have to take you back home, man. Like I think I think you all started back home in Africa, you know. Um, you know, growing up, you know, that's all we know. You know, a lot of kids, you know, all we do is just play soccer. So I think um, it all started back there. You know, when I was growing up, you know, we just, you know, it's like um, it's a little bit of different, you know, um, compared to how we do it back there and over here, you know, because back home when you're young, you don't have any um, organized sports. So you just grab you and your homies, you just go outside and, and you guys just start playing, you know? So for me, it all started back over there and that's when I fell in love with the game. And, and when I came over here, that's when I had the opportunity to be in, um, in a, um, organized kind of like sports, you know? But to answer your question, it all started back home. That's awesome, man. It's awesome to see how you grew as a player out there. And then when you came out here, it was totally different, but it opened your eyes and also the opportunity to end up playing for the So if you can let us know a little bit about that and how that situation was, how it was brought upon you to be able to get that chance to play at such a young age with the LA Galaxy. Man, it was crazy, man, because um, I... Like I said, when I came over here, you know, I started playing club soccer just like every other kid who plays club soccer. You do the ODP, the regional, and I was lucky to get, um, you know, to um, join the U17 national team. So I was in Bradenton, you know, I was there for about two, three years. Um, we went to the Junior World Cup, but I was, I was very um, unlucky. Like yeah. the, day, the day right before the um, tournament start. I got injured, so I didn't play the old the old um, tournament. So I came back home from the U17 World Cup, and um, I was getting ready to go to college and stuff like that. That's when I got approached by the MLS. Um, I mean, they already knew about me because I was when I was in Bradenton with the U17. We play against you know MLS teams and stuff like that. So. I knew, you know, teams yeah. were like already looking at me. So, but 
at that time, I, I wasn't sure if I was ready, you know? So when I came back, like I said, I was trying to go to college. That's when I got a call from the MLS. They say, hey, do you want to come to the league? And um, I, I was like, nah, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not ready, you know? And, you know, they kind of encouraged me to be like, okay, go out there and train with a couple of MLS teams, and they're going to give us a feedback about you and let us know if you're ready to play or not. Yeah. So I was sent out to DC United. Um, it was DC United, Colorado, and uh, what's the other team? Uh, there was another team, um, and the um, Galaxy actually. The, the, um, so um, um, after that, um, every every week I would fly out and train for, for like a week, and the coaches would call the MLS and tell them, "Hey, he can play," you know, like <laughs> he can play. He so it. right, so like after I think I did it for like about like three weeks. Then um, I was at home and I got a call and they said, well, we're going to put you in the MLS draft. But because it like me, like it was different because the league was already playing. Right. So the league was 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 already playing. So they put me in the MLS with a lottery because I didn't go through the original draft because the league was already going on because like I joined in during the season. So um, they told me, they said, hey, they're going to have the um, draft these days, and we're going to let you know what team picked you up. And like a few days later, I got a call from the um, Galaxy um, GM. He was like, hey, you're coming to, to the, um, to the um, Galaxy. <laughs> I was like, what? Because <laughs> at that time, because I signed the same year, as um, David Beckham, you know, and at that time he was all of all over TV, you know. So when the GM, the um, GM actually, his name was um, Alexis Lalas, when he called me and 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 he told me that I was man, I was I was shocked. <laughs> I was like, whoa, okay. <laughs> so you know, a couple of days I just packed my bag and head out to LA, and the rest is history. Yes, sir. The rest is history. That's awesome because having that opportunity at such a young age, you really saw what it was like to be in that professional, you know, that whole just everything. Being professional with players like David Beckham, Landon Donovan. I mean, for you, how was that now becoming that rookie going into that alley galaxy, having that all around you, you know, being now 16 and professional? Being in that bubble, how was that for you at such a young age? And how did you transition on becoming, you know, a starter? Seeing, I mean, players left and right. I mean, who you, people you're sitting next to in the locker rooms, I mean, it's incredible. Oh, man, like, I got to L.A. Um, still, mind shock. Imagine, I was, I was that kid in, in Bradenton and just a little skinny kid. From there, now I'm in the big league, right? And I got to LA. I remember um, they picked me up, and I show up the next day of practice. Obviously, it was my first day, so I got to get in early, right? So I got in early at practice. Alexi Lalas is showing me around and is showing me the um, old stadium and stuff like that. And I walked in the locker room. So the first person I saw was Kobe Jones. I don't know if you if you if you if you yeah. um, know him. Sure. He's a legend, right? Kobe Jones. So I so he was there. So um, Alexis told him, "He's like, hey, this is the um, new kid that we just signed." And Kobe James looked at me. He's like, "Oh, so are you gonna come change the um, season for us? Cause cause we suck right now." <laughs> I was like, "Nah, man. Hey, I'm just here, man. <laughs> I'm just here." So. Imagine like Kobe Jones, like you know, like when you're young, you see like people like Kobe Jones and all those guys, and you know, it was it was amazing. And um, they kind of showed me around, and we walked in the locker room, and there's a locker room. Everybody names is all around, right? And the crazy thing about it is like there was a locker room with David Beckham, an empty locker in the in in the middle, 
and there's Landon Donovan, right? And Alexa Lala's look at me. He's like, hey, do you want to sit right there? I'm like, nah. Then he looked at me. He's like, kid, just go sit there. And he put my name right in between Landon and, and David. David. <laughs> right? So now check this out, right? True story. So I'm out there getting ready, right? Everybody changes. This is my first encounter in, in the big locker room. Guys are coming in. I'm saying, hi, hey, I'm, my name is Easy. I'm the new player, blah, 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 right? And I'm changing. Then I heard an English accent walking in. It's right, English accent. Good morning, good morning. And I turn. It's Beckham, right? Beckham walked in the locker room, dabbing everybody, right? Dabbing everybody walking in. And I freaked out. I freaked out. I'm like, <laughs> only, I'm like, only, only. It's Beckham. It's Beckham, right? I start yelling in the locker room. Everybody is laughing at me. They say, yo, look at this kid. This kid is funny, right? Bro, I lost it because, like I said, I joined during the season. So the season was going on. When I signed, it was like kind of like the middle of the season. So I freaked out. And, and Beckham just woke up to me. He's like, hey, I'm Beckham. I was like, yeah, man, of course I know you, right? <laughs> and he sat down. And, and at that time, he had like a bad ankle injury. Like his ankle was all swell up. And, you know, he, he dabbed me. And, and, and um, I would say it, right? Because you know when you get in the locker room, everybody's dropping it, right? Cause, 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 like you know, that's how it is in, in the locker room. And he dropped everything down, right? And I'm like, yo, <laughs> and I lost it. I was 16. I was, I was, I was in there changing off. I've been, I've been towering like that. And these dudes just came in and dropping, and and I'm like, man, what a day it was, man. Like it was, it was just amazing. It was just like to, to like see all the um stars around you, like Landon and. And and David and, and 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 Kobe Jones, Eddie Lewis. It was but it was it was a superstar team at that time. It's like anywhere you look, it's like somebody who have been there done that. And for me to be at, at that in that in, in in that locker room was first a blessing, because grew up. I'm from I came from Africa, man. I never thought I was gonna make it that far. So for me to even be in that locker room, man, it was it was a blessing, and 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 um, it took me like it took me quite like probably like a week or two to like settle down, and actually be like, you know what, I'm right here, you yeah. know what I mean? Because like I was in a shock, you know. Even even my first practice, man, I was I was nervous. Mm -hmm. Give me the ball, I can't play, you know. Yeah. But like it took me a time, and um, once I once I settled down and and um, and get to know everybody, you know, and and actually be like, you know what, I can actually play, you know, I can actually I can I can, I can actually hang, and um, it was good, it was good, man. It was that first day was just amazing, you know. I I remember I was I came back to to my hotel. I was just I was just calling all my homies back home. Like, oh man, I'm playing with Becky, man. I'm playing with Landon, man. And it was like, whoa, are you sitting? Like, it was just, it was a blessing, man. All, yeah. all together, it was, man. Because I came a long way, you know what I mean? Most definitely. And like you said, coming from Africa and seeing what you're and living what you're living out there, and now coming here, getting that opportunity to be as, in a professional environment like that, like you said, in the middle of two of the most elite players in the league at the time was probably one of the greatest things to see and experience. Right. I mean, being in that locker room, playing now with those players overall after you're 16, a couple years later, you think it was worth being at a young age, at such a young age, playing professionally? Or, how, or did it affect certain things for you? I mean, you know, at a young age, your mental strength or capacity is not at the highest level. You know, if you're not playing injuries, or just, you know, players just go through those sort of droughts and have those obstacles that can make or break them. So there were, were there any injuries or obstacles for you throughout your years in Galaxy that kind of brought you down? Or were you able to mentally be strong at a young age to overcome them? Man, it was, like you said, man, it was it was up, ups and down. But yeah, there was one point at the time when 
I I almost be like, man, I don't want to do this anymore because it was tough to get in that team at that time. You know what I mean? Imagine I play with LA Galaxy, the the biggest club at that time in the MLS, right? Anywhere we go, it's a sold out game. So everybody are going there to pay to see superstars. Yeah. So it, it come a point where I was I was doing really good. I was doing good at practice, you know. I I was doing excellent, but I didn't have the um, opportunity and the chances that I feel like I deserve to yeah. get on the field and play. And that's when um, the kind of shutdown came came to me. I'm like, man, like I don't want to do this. Right? I start getting frustrated, you know, because I'm like, man, like I'm the best player at practice, but nobody's giving me chance. You know, game day comes. I will make the 18 and go sit on the bench and don't even play. You know what I mean? So it was frustrating for me. Um, but you know what, Edson? Like for for, for me, like I I um um I was like, man, I don't I don't want to do this again. But like I came back to myself. I'm like, you know what? This is what what I do. You know, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna push it until the coach is gonna be like, I'm gonna give this kid a chance. You know yeah. what I mean? Cause, 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 cause when you when you in that position, right? There's a lot of guys, right? That's gonna be next to you. Hey man, you young man, you have time. Like, don't listen to that, because especially in this league in the MLS, it's like if you're not playing, they want the next guy. It's gonna be the next hot guy coming from college, right? And 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 I was I was in like a contract where I was making a lot of money, right? I was generation Adidas. Yeah. So I was I was making money more than guys who've been in the league five, six, seven years. Right? So my salary was up there. So I I I, I, I was like, man, I need to get on that field. I need to play. I, I keep I keep showing up early and um there was, you know, I keep I keep getting help from like, you know, the um older players like it's in Bordeaux and stuff like that. Like we would show up early and and work on crossing, finishing and stuff, you know. And I start getting chances, you know. I start getting chances. I'm coming in, playing a little bit, you know. You know, just getting my feet wet a little bit. And 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 and, and for a younger kid to make a debut against your biggest rival, right, Chivas, USA, right. So back then, Chivas and LA. When Fair we go right. at it, it's El Clasico, right? So yeah. that's when I make my debut. Like, it was like, you, you know what? Like, leading up to that to that game, I was so down on myself, bro. I was so down, like, man, I'm not playing, this, 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 that. And actually, my boy, Ed Simbado, came up to me. He was like, man, just keep working hard, man. You're looking good. Just keep working hard. And um, that Friday came, the last practice, we practice. I went home. I'm like, man, I'm not playing tomorrow. Then obviously you you um came to the locker room and you look on the board. You're like, whoa, it's El Cise, right? El Clasico game, ESPN. I'm on the line, right? <laughs> I wasn't starting, but I was in the 18. I'm yeah. on the bench. I'm like, okay, I'm here, right? <laughs> and and I got I got my chance, man. I got my chance in the sec like second half. I think it was like six to fifth minutes. And I got in, man, and it was amazing, man. It was it was a sold out game, and it was on ESPN, and 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 like I look back at it, I'm like, man, like all that all that hard work I put in, and 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 me not giving up, you know. Although it was tough for me to like easily just be like, man, I don't want to do this because I'm not getting the opportunity, you know, for me not giving up and and and, and just keep going. It was worth it, you know. Yeah. But, but yeah, definitely, there was there was time where I didn't even want to show up at practice because I was like, man, I'm not, I'm not gonna play. You know what I mean? So you just gotta keep going, you know, and just keep positive and and just keep being positive, you know. What do you think for you was like the biggest motivation though throughout that time feeling low? Or was it after you got your chances and after you also saw yourself playing well? Was it just that what motivated you, or was it like 
all right, I'm just really just not going to give up. I've been here, here, like you said, and when I do get my chance, I'm going to show the coach, like, hey, this is the reason why you guys signed, you know, and I'm not going to be giving up anytime soon. So what was that motivational factor that wasn't you? Was it there just like that heart and loving the sport as much as you did? Or was it also because you just wanted to show everybody in and out, day in and day out of training that you were there? Man, it was it was a combination of both, you know. It was it was my self motivation. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like I was like I want to be out there. I want to play. Like I keep going back to 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 my hotel and just keep getting down on myself. And like it it, it came to like a point where I was like, you know what? I have the power, right? This is my leg, right? This is what I do. This is what I've been doing my whole life. I can either get down on myself or just keep pushing. And also, like I get helps from you know the um older guys that that I was cool with. Like guys who've been there for years, and those are the guys that were encouraging me. Kid, you can play. You can play. You're just not getting your chances. You can you can play. Don't give up. And that's when that's where you you like any team. You need one or two guys like that that's gonna encourage you, especially a veteran player, right? That's why you need people like that that's gonna encourage you to keep going because you're gonna come a point any rookie, right? In the in the U.S. game. You're going to come to a point where you're going to be down and out. But you need somebody that's going to encourage you and push you so you can keep going. And and luckily for me, I had a couple of those guys. And one was Ed Simbodo, and the other one was Abel Azavier. He played in he played in England. He played in Portugal. He's a Portuguese international. He was a big timer. So those guys were the ones that was encouraging me to keep going. And also, I have the self motivation you know so that's that's the thing that um keeps me going and but like man it was i was i was i was in some dark time man during those time and 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 it was tough no most definitely i mean for players athletes in general when it comes to playing time or injuries or whatever it is you know family issues it could take a toll from the athlete and like you said you become and you are pretty much sit in a downtime where you're so low mentally, right. you don't have motivation. Right. And it's amazing to see your story and hear from you because being at a young age and overcoming such things like that, you really see like the player that you've become on and off the field, you know. And it's amazing to also have those people around you who want to see you grow, you know. At the right. end, I mean, it's. It's competition all around, but when you exactly. see that friends on your side who are putting you forward and letting you know, like, hey, you got talent, like, got it, and that's that's all that makes it worth it, you know? Right, right, exactly. And so, I mean, biggest question here, you won an MLS championship with Galaxy. I mean, tell me a little bit about that. I mean, that's a dream come true, you know, and so how was that for you? Man, it was amazing, man, that season. Because, um, like I said, our first year, we were the worst team in the league. <laughs> we we got we have we have Becker, we got Kobe Jones, we got all 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 the superstars, and we was not doing well. We didn't even make the playoff, right? We didn't make the playoff. The coach left, right? Um, it was um, Frankie Allo. Yeah. He left. We had, I think, we got um, Wood Gullets. Another legend, right? Gullets, right? Um, um, Holland, Holland legends, right? Coaching Chelsea, right? He came in, he left, and we finally got Bruce Arena, right? You guys, everybody know Bruce yeah. Arena, right? So we got Bruce Arena, so he came in and he just shaped everybody, you know, because there was, there was, there was so many egos, right? There was so many egos in that locker room because everybody was a superstar, but Bruce Arena was like a a player coach, you know what I mean? So he was able to bring down the egos down and make sure that everybody trying to get together and play. So yeah. that was the biggest difference leading up to that championship for here for us. And everybody was, was like gelling and, and, and everybody started coming, you know, hanging out more off the field 
and do like extra stuff, you know, and and it was amazing. And when we finally got there, we we went and raised that raised that raised that trophy. Man, like nobody can take that for for, for me, man. Like, you know, there's anything, you know, I look back at it and be like, man, I'm an MLS champ. I got a ring, man. You know, it was it was it was amazing. You know, like you know, when you when you see like the um, NBA All Star Weekend, right? It's just like that. So you get so like the the um location in like probably like three four days and you just stay over there and you got you have everything going on and you got to go out there and play and um what a amazing amazing you know events that was and and for me to be part of it man like i said it's all blessing you know and again i kept going back to like where where i came from people like us who probably not even supposed to like do stuff like that you know so i give all Praise to the most high for for me to have opportunity like that to um you know be in position like that and 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 get a ring you know especially in um the number one I mean the um, biggest team in the um in the um country so it was it was a blessing. No, that's amazing too because like you said, coming from Africa and where you came from. You know, sometimes you don't ever imagine yourself being there. Right. And what does happen and when you do go through those certain experiences that, like you said, you thank God for that. It is a blessing because all that hard work at the end of the day, you know, paid off. And like you yeah. said, you can now and no one can take that away from you. Right. You see, man, a lot of people don't understand, like people like us that came from another country. It's not easy, you know, coming over here, you got to learn the language. You got to learn the culture, right? And you got to learn a lot of things, you know. So for us to, like, be out here and do the things that we want to do and and grind, man, and and, and, and and just being in this in this sport and just keep going, it's not easy because there's a lot of obstacles that we have to, like, face, you know, in school. Like, 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 like for me in school, like, people like, it's like, like, I was, I was the only black dude playing soccer, right? Cause I was in that neighborhood where the black kids are playing basketball, football, right? So I'm the only kid, like only my soccer team. Everybody making fun of me, right? My English and stuff like that. So it's a lot of things that we go through and 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 we like go past. And for us to be in position like this, where we can, you know, play this game that we love and 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 pretty much do the things that we do is um uh, it's a blessing, man. You know. I applaud you, bro, because it takes a lot of lot of strength to do what you did, and you made it. And so, who do you think you can uh, credit your success to? I mean, besides yourself, of course. But I would see my parents, man. You know, my parents they um keep me grounded. You know, um, you know, it's in, like for me, like this is. I never want to wanted to play professional soccer, right? I just came here to like have a better life, pretty much. Because again, I'm going back home where there was a civil war, and and I was lucky to get out of there and come to the states. But when I started playing, my parents kept me grounded, so and they supported me the whole time. You know, even you know sometimes I didn't want to play; I just want to go to school. I want to be a lawyer, right? That's what I'm going to think. I'm trying to be a lawyer and all that. But my parents, you know, they um keep me grinded and 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 they they um they make sure that they um support me and yeah. And and yeah, man, I give um I give my credit to them. That's amazing too, right? Having that support system to really be your backbone, right? A lot of people and athletes who do go away from home, I mean, that's what, what helps them, you know, they be that player that they want to become and, you know, stay pretty much centered. And like you said, you talked about the one above. I mean, God always has a plan for us. and That's also important to have. I mean, having that faith to really know, like, all right, things happen for a reason and, I'm here, you know, when I am here, take advantage of those those experiences and opportunities that we do have. Right, right, exactly, man, exactly. 
You know what I mean? So, oh, go ahead. No, no, no. You good? You good? Go ahead. Go ahead. And so, I mean, what advice would you give yourself about the journey you've taken? Man, never give up. I know this is a, a cliche answer. Everybody say that, but 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 I mean it's true. You never give up. You never give up, and you just keep going. You know, like for me, I would not change anything. You know, like I would not change anything. And 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 my advice is like, so not not. Especially like this will go back to my to my MLS days, right? Yes. So not listen to players, certain players that just trying to give you false information, right? Right? Like like for example, like when I was young, I, I had, you know, a couple of veteran guys that were just coming up to me. Don't worry, man. Your time is coming up, right? Don't don't take that for an answer. If you ever had an opportunity to be where you at, you gotta be hungry, right? You gotta be hungry and make sure that you go and get it. You don't have to be comfortable, right? Because it can easily get away from you, right? So yeah. I was I was a victim of that for, for like a, a little bit, you know. I get like comfortable, like oh yeah, I'm young, I'm gonna be here till like twenty, thirty years and stuff like that, and it easily goes away like that. Yeah. So for me, my advice is you just got to keep keep yourself hungry, right? You got to keep being hungry. And, and, and even if you make it somewhere in, in Man United, don't just get there. You sign a contract. You'd be like, okay, I'm good now. No, you're not good, right? You got to keep being hungry. You got to grind every day. You got to make sure that, you know what? I'm here. I'm going to show them that I deserve to be here. Yeah. So... Just just keep going. Even if you make it to the highest level and you're there, don't get too comfortable. Yeah, at the end of the day, I mean, once you get to where you want to be, I mean, you have to stay consistent. I right. mean, there's players who are younger than you and want your spot, you know. And so for you to not let that happen, you're going to have to come in day in and day out and keep putting in the work. If not, I mean, people can take your spot right away. And like you talked about, when you're a, on the Galaxy, I mean, if you're not doing well, you're not playing, it's an automatic, you know? Yeah. So definitely be be consistent enough to stay at that level. Right. Exactly. So for my last question, I mean, what is your, I guess, your favorite memory of being a footballer? It can be, I don't know, if it's the MLS championship, I mean, that, but or when you go, like, when you scored the best goal or, I mean, what do you think? I mean, that goal in the MASL that you scored in Tacoma. I mean, <laughs> there, there's a lot of things that we could talk about. But I like, know, I'm, man. I've been doing this since 2007. Man, it's a long time. Nah, man. If I if I have to choose one, I'll probably I'll probably say when I make my MLS debut because I knew how how down I was, how frustrated I was, you know. So when I finally make my debut against our like biggest rival at that time, which was Chivas USA, in front of a sold out crowd. Man, that was that was the best for me. That was the best, you know. It it, it was just dream come true. Man, it was just a dream come true, you know. When um Frank Yalop looked at me, he's like, Easy, right? I was warming up over there and then the game is going on and and he's like, easy, easy. And I look, I was like, me? He's like, yeah, you're in. I was like, whoa. <laughs> he's like, whoa, I'm in. <laughs> and um, I think that was, that got to be, man, that got to be my favorite moment. Because for me, that was, that's that's when everything started, you know. Yeah. So making my debut at 16 years and 13 days, to be exact, I think, if I can remember, it got to be it, man. It got to be my favorite, man. And and it was amazing, man. Amazing day. Experiences no one can really can really take from you. Right, yeah. man. It was, man. You, you yeah. cherish it. Yeah, cherish it. And, and, and back, like, 
you know, I, I will I will go back and 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 just touch at something again about, about like all the players. You know what I mean? Like when I make my my debut, right before I come in, Beckham came next to me. And he says something to me, because obviously, you know, I was young, I'm nervous and stuff. And he came up to me, he's like, enjoy it. Enjoy the moment. Don't be nervous, just enjoy it. You make a mistake, it's okay. This is before I came in. So I'm standing there, the ball was outside, and he jumped next to me and told me that. And that just make a huge difference to me, like in the whole thing, like all my nerves just go away, right? For somebody of that statue to came up to me and tell me that you're making your debut in front of a sold out crowd. You're live on ESPN right now. Don't be nervous. Just have fun. Enjoy the moment. And as soon as I got in, it's in. The ball, they threw the ball to David. Beckham Chester put the ball down and he swing it all the way to me. And I bring the ball down, get my confidence down and play. So... Again, it goes back to, you know, having people like that, professionals, yeah, right? I'm that knows that, you know, this kid need help right now. And I'm going to make sure that I got his back no matter what. So for me, moments like that is, is, is something that, that I would cherish and, and something that I will always, you know, get right here no matter what, you know. And that's what I'm trying to do when I play now. You know, like you can... You, you can be a prime example of that. Like, I'm always trying to encourage the younger guys because I know when I was at those younger guys' shoes, those older guys at that time, the Beckham, the Landons, the Eddie Lewis, the Kobe Jones, and all those guys that I was fortunate to play with, those are the guys that encouraged me to be calm down, play. It's okay. Mistakes are going to happen. But, but guess what, Easy? We got your back. So little yeah. things that, like that can make a huge difference in any player's career or, or like any player's life. And, and, and for me, that's how I'm trying to do when I play now because now I'm closer to, to be a veteran now. So that's what I'm trying to do now and just pass those things that those guys pass on to me and trying to help people now and so they can become better. Yeah, I mean, you saying that, it, it does make a big difference. And as rookies like myself, I mean, luckily enough, was able to play with you at, on Fury. And, and it's true. Having that confidence from the older veterans is probably the best way to incorporate yourself and become, I guess, more free when you do play as a rookie coming into any team. Having that confidence from any player been in the league for so long, has won championships. You know, David Beckham, like you said, that's just something where, all right, all my doubts that I had, you know, all that nervousness that I had, it just, it goes away. And, yeah, it, you being that now at the MHL level, being a veteran, and you also have that too, and that's amazing. And I applaud you for that because a lot of people have that and went through it and don't go on and, and do the same thing. You know? Exactly. Yeah. Right. You change those those different players and your teammates' lives as well on becoming confident at such an early stage in the season, you know? Because right. as a rookie, you come in and you don't hear nothing from veterans, you know, at all until maybe later on. But like you like you did th throughout the season at Fury, I know you've done it to many other players. You gave them that confidence that they, confidence that they wanted to hear since the beginning of the season, right. which makes it easier for you. For players to transition into that professional, right, right, and 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 especially going into like indoor, right? It's like you play outdoor your whole life, and you go into indoor. It's a complete different game. It, yeah. it, like it's a complete different game. It's like you are learning a new sport. You're learning exactly. a complete new sport. So when you have people who's been there for years that can talk to you, right, and encourage you. It can take you a long way because you're playing a complete, complete different sport. So you need people like that. And sometimes you, you if you're lucky, you have people like that. And sometimes you don't have veterans. Right? You just got veterans who's just gonna pound on you. <laughs> yeah. And 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 that's not helping you, right? It's not helping. He's like, man, he's already nervous. He's already learning, right? <laughs> but you guys are just pounding on them and put them down. It's like you don't need that. So. 
but that's what everybody needs to be, you know, like, you know, hopefully, you know, those next generation, you know, they can, those guys that, that I pass those, those um, ideas to, right? When they become old and become a veteran, they can pass those ideas to the next guy and just help people and make everybody become better. So, yeah. yeah. No, man, I appreciate it, man. I appreciate your time that you, that you've given us in the hashtag Let's Kick It Series. I'm thankful for all the advice that you've given me and, I mean, to everyone who's listening, I mean, it's amazing to hear and, and where you and where you started and where you are at now. So I thank you, man. I appreciate it. Nah, man. Thanks for having me, man. Thank you. And um, hopefully we can link up soon, bro. Right? Yes, sir. That's definitely that's definitely the plan. I thank you, man. I appreciate your time. All right, Enjoy. man. Sounds good. All right. Thank you. Have a good one, Eddie. Enjoy. All right. Okay. Thank you so much for all those who joined us thank you for izzy for being part of it as well and we'll hear from him soon thank you guys enjoy